Good morning. We're back. <laughs> Who are you going to call? Ghostbuster. Oh, sorry. Blue sister. <laughs> no. Blue sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Spirit. My oh, family. My YouTube family. <laughs> okay. And we're back. We're on lesson 325. Yeah, welcome. Beautiful to spend morning with our family. It's the best way. The only way. Yes, yes. Okay, so we're on 325, lesson 325. Yeah. All things I think I see reflect ideas. Yeah, there's a lot in that one statement. Yes. Weren't we just talking about that a few lessons ago? I that behind so. everything material is the idea that's behind it. Yes. Yeah. All yeah. things I think I see reflect ideas. Okay, so let's read it. Yeah. This is Salvation's keynote. What I see reflects a process in my mind which starts with my idea of what I want. Whoa. So he's saying it right here. Yeah. It always, whatever we see, whatever we experience, either judged as good, pleasurable, or bad, painful, yeah. starts with my idea of what I want. Okay. So from there, the mind makes up an image of the thing the mind desires, judges valuable, and therefore seeks to find. These images are then projected outward, looked upon, esteemed as real, mm -hmm. and guarded as one's own. From insane wishes comes an insane world. From judgment comes a world condemned. And from forgiving thoughts, a gentle world comes forth with mercy for the Holy Son of God to offer him a kindly home where he can rest a while before he journeys on and help his brothers walk ahead with him and find the way to heaven and to God. Our Father, your ideas reflect the truth and mine apart from yours but make up dreams. I have to change that but to only. I'm going to say it again. Yes. Our Father, your ideas reflect the truth and mine apart from yours only make up dreams. Nice. Let me behold what only yours reflect for yours and yours alone establish truth. So what I got just then with all of this mm -hmm. is that is that um, a reminder here is that all we consciously desire here in the world, in the body, along with all that we defend ourselves from, in other words, what we fear, mm -hmm. Uh, they make up our desires that he's talking yes. about here yes. and their consequent, uh, consequent manifestation. So, you know, I think the big thing to say here is that a lot of this, until, we, until we've done a certain amount of divine deconstruction, a lot of what we invest in is what we fear. And if it's still hidden in the unconscious, mm -hmm. it has to manifest because it's what we believe in and therefore it's what we project. Right. All right. So if we're fearful of disease or fearful of conflict or fearful of financial loss and all of these things, yeah. uh, it means that we have not genuinely forgiven these right okay because i think the process involves joining with holy spirit and asking hey i want to be able to recognize 
these fears because while they're unforgiven mm -hmm. and unrelinquished to Holy Spirit, right. they have to manifest in some yes. way because we believe they're real. Otherwise, we wouldn't fear, right? That's right. Yeah, we, we actually want those beliefs because the, the first, the very first decision that the mind's always making is, you know, is the answer to the question of what am I? So he's pointing to that while I am an idea in the mind of God <laughs> and I'm consenting, I want that. I, that's because I want it because that's valuable to me, right? That's the desire is to be as I truly am. Then my mind is holding the thoughts with God and that's what's going to be experienced. But if that desire has somehow changed because we think separation is valuable, well, then the mind needs fear and its imagery. And so we're going to pull from the ego thought system everything that it contains. It can be sickness or lack or conflict or aging or, you know, divorce, homelessness, whatever, right? Anything that the ego thought system contains will be uh, pulled upon or, or called up in our thought and projected outward as our experience. And I want to make it very clear, this um, sequence. If you can really get this down, you'll start finding where the mind is getting caught up in the sequence. But the way that it works is that first, the, through the ego thought system, it's, I'm a body. Mm -hmm. Then that body uses physical sense to look out upon what the mind's projecting. So this body sees images uh -huh. and a judgment is made based on this one's education. I know what that is, right? So I'm a body, I'm seeing something, I'm making it real with my judgment upon it. Then there's an evaluation on it to this one. Is it good? Is it bad? Do I want it? Does it, is it helpful? Is it repugnant? Do I need to defend myself from it? Protect myself from it? This illusion that I'm making real through my judgment. And then there's something to do about it. So that triggers or employs the I know mind or the doer. Go save or go help or go uh, um, obtain. Yeah. yeah. Plan. Planning. Yes. Go do something about this real problem or this issue and then of course because it's seek and don't find what we're doing with our best practices or our greatest defenses is never going to work never permanently there's never any satisfaction or true conclusion of the matter and so there's failure a sense of failure and unworthiness and then guilt and shame okay so there's the loop your mythical me you're looking out onto a world, your judgments make it real, you evaluate it, you do something, it fails, you feel the guilt. Mm -hmm. That's the ego loop. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> so much fun. Anyway, <laughs> so where are you on that, right? But it's all serving that first thing that the valuable, the idea that separation is valuable for what it offers you. That's it. So Nook has beautifully channeled with Jesus, not channeled, but as a transparency for the Christ mind, has given us the seven steps to quantum forgiveness. Mm. And that is the undoing of those of that sequence in the ego mind. And it is down below, top link in the resources. Mm -hmm. um, and she goes through it. There's you can have the you can have Nook's voice in the audio link, which is great carrying around with you or on your phone at night or whatever. But there's you can also read it. And I suggest highly to if you haven't read it already, you don't know it by now, print it out <laughs> and look at it and take your triggers through that process because it completely unwinds it, backs it up all the way to recognizing that you are still the idea in the mind of God and what you thought has occurred has never occurred. It's the forgiveness and accepting the atonement. Um, and so that process, it's like, oh, seven steps and you read it and you do it, but you know, you do it eight, nine, 10 times, and then it becomes very quick. You won't need to look at the written word, but you can do it immediately in your thought. Take the trigger, take the idea right through it, back to you, that state of peace. Mm. Yeah, Thank very you. helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then, of course, there's that short prayer right at the very end, mm -hmm. which I used for a couple of years there, that 
that I'm sure accelerated deconstruction period for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> and that's that's there too. Mm -hmm. All right. But take yourself through the steps as as Sis has explained here yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. And so when yes. we finally forgive it and we're thinking the ideas with God, then, you know, we're going to have what is this happy dream in the real world mm. for a time, right? I mean, think about that. Without these blocks, without these thoughts with the ego thought system, what what do you stand to lose? Oh, I don't know. You're <laughs> uh, All the, the pain and the sorrow and the sickness and you stand to gain peace, yes. a mind at rest, one that's in the flow where everything's working for you relationships that are fulfilling a function that's yours specifically that you can do effortlessly your, your needs known and met right right yeah all the time all the time <clears throat> so why wouldn't we want that right yeah yeah okay. and in addition to that just below the video is another recommended resource for today <clears throat> every day actually <laughs> thank you um <laughs> And it's called the, it's a guided meditation. It's called the end of fear. Yeah. Yeah. I think that we're going to yes. add that into this one or is that yesterday? That was yesterday's, but oh, that'll what? be on that list of resources. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Terrific. End of fear guided. Yeah. Yeah. And finally, can I just add one last thing? Were you done, sis? I didn't mean to. Oh, I'm done. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, something to consider in this lesson, all things I think I see reflect ideas. This is very helpful because it's literal. When we think that we're confronted with a real physical problem, mm -hmm. it would seem insurmountable that prayers or the correction of our mind could actually have any effect at all. But when we're willing to really accept that everything is a projection from our mind, so it must be ideas that we're looking at, ideas that we're dealing with, ideas that are still in the mind. So the physical body is still is actually an idea in thought. Now you can make the substitution. If the body is thought and it's under the ego's directive of sickness as a proof of separation, well, that thought, if the thought is the cause of the body's issue, then thought can correct it. So how important making that ag agreeing with God's view of you in place of the ego saying, well, you're this mortal body with a real problem. No, when you, when you reduce the, the idea of matter back to its native substance of thought, then you can make the switch very easily. Mm -hmm. You forgive the ego idea or thought and you accept God's thought in your mind. Well, now the mind is healed. Can a healed mind project a sick effect? No. It's not possible. Otherwise, no. otherwise the effect would be separate from yes. its cause, which is impossible. Or yes, or even more powerful, right? It could be rogue. It could be different. Yeah. Mm. So that's it. Beautiful. So, moving said, everything to thought now you can now you can see why healing is so doable it truly is it's simple yeah. we make it the ego makes it complex by saying well that's physical you know your thoughts can't do anything to something physical hmm. and yet all the physical is thought that's right the substance of everything substance. is the idea okay so that really helps us to embrace the first miracle principle doesn't it that's there right. is no order of difficulty in miracles. That's and it. that is why everything in the phenomenal world can be healed. Yeah. There's because it's that. all the substance of thought in yes. our mind. And when we correct that thought as cause, the effect as whatever physical substance it may seem to be, mm -hmm. is also brought into alignment and healed. That's right. That's it. So you can Very make simple. it. Yeah. Yes. No hierarchy of illusions, no order of difficulty in miracles. It's simply swat. It's just forgiving what isn't and accepting God's decree there instead, which is our will. Okay. I've just hmm. seen something. So if, if all physical substance is thought, mm -hmm. 
And, and Jesus does say there is no hierarchy of illusions here in the ego dream. Mm -hmm. We could say that there's no hierarchy of thought then. Right. In we, the ego dream. Yes, because the ego has arranged different forms and given it different definitions at different values. Mm -hmm. But one illusion is no more real or different or more difficult to replace with the truth than another illusion. We Only the ego assigns, well, disease is a real problem, but this, you know, paper cut is not. <laughs> an illusion is an illusion. But that difference in our valuation of it is another ploy of the ego to seem to make healing one thing more difficult than another. Yeah. Very good. Very and we good. can also say that the healing of something very simple is the overcoming of the belief in death. Only our belief that, that death is insurmountable would seem to keep death as a, an exception to the rule, right? Right. So physical death is a, a, a more truthful illusion than Definitely. any other illusion. Yes. <laughs> only because only because of the consent and value that we've all agreed to. None of this is makes any sense at all, right? We're looking in chaos from an insane mind, deciding that this this is a car, this is a body, this is you know, this is a disease. Um, we yeah, the ego and its definitions are the only reason why we're we're consenting that that one thing may be more difficult than another to forgive. I think it's time to throw a really big party. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you've had any healing at all, you have overcome the world. The principle behind your healing demonstration is yeah. the one that overcomes the world. Jesus has already done it. Yeah. And that's what, what we're supposed to do or, is to accept the atonement, accept yes. what he's already done. That's right. And receive it. Yes. Because it's ours. Yeah. Cash it in. Ka ching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really good. So everything is at the in in mind. If everything's in mind, everything is idea. There is no matter in mind. Ma a matter is the illusion. It's beautiful to to accept and really uh, contemplate this. Let's add time to that, please. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Time and space. Yes. And so it's all the same. Oh, I'd love to be able to talk about some some um, incredible miracles that occurred about around time and the collapsing of time. We'll do that maybe before we've okay finished all of the lessons. Yeah. It'd be lovely to do that. To yeah, or the next lesson that. that touches on it, you might want to put in one of your older blogs that where you gave your testimony around that. Yeah. Yeah. You have, you've got a couple of them in there that link part one, part two. I think you got a three pronger in there, don't you? Yeah. In your blogs about time, part one, part two, and part three. You know, I honestly can't remember, but I'll look them up. Okay. And um, also about the one about overcoming death too. The guy that died at our retreat. Oh yeah. Yes, and was resurrected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just a few little miracles like that. <laughs> I love the testimonies. That's, 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 that's everything. Yeah. Yep. All right, you guys, that that's enough. That was a mouthful. That was fun. sis. Yes, I enjoyed was. that very Me much. What a beautiful uh, lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All think. things I think I see all things I think I see reflect ideas. Yeah. So how are we seeing them? All right. Have fun. We're healed. <laughs> Have a good day. Here, right? Yes. <laughs> I think I felt myself levitate there for a moment. So yeah. <laughs> Me too. We love you, family. Thanks for joining us. Um, spread the word. Invite your friends. Thank you. We want to get the right. teachings out as far as, as they will go to those minds that don't know that we're here that may benefit from it. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Thank everybody. You. Thank you, family. Bye. Bye, sis.